Hey guys, just a short heads up, if you want to process my data and practice your skills and try to perhaps replicate what I did, um, you can always support me on Patreon where I actually give you access to my raw data files or stacks and um, they're, they're available for you to process there. That way you can support me and also help yourself become better. But uh, yeah, that's about it. Um, I'm not gonna start the video you've been all waiting for. <laughs> So before I want to start the actual guide, there are a few requirements. You need basic processing knowledge, you need Adobe Photoshop, Starnet++ and perhaps some noise reduction software. Okay, starting off, we have to extract the H-alpha and O3. These are the two band passes that the LX stream captures. Um, we have to extract them from the image because if I stretch this image, we'd have a red mess and nothing else. And we never ever want to work uh, in this form because especially the blue channel is essentially waste. So what you do is you go to channels, select the red channel, just press Control A, then Control C to copy it, paste it in here, call that H alpha. Then we go back, select the green channel, which is O3, paste it in here and call it O3. Now, when I equalize this and zoom in, here we have a very weak signal, but it's it's a signal, right? This is O3. It's almost always weaker than H-alpha. And then we have H-alpha, very strong, very dominant. That's why the entire image was red, because H-alpha is the red channel. And all you have to do is save these. So you go to file, save as, call it H alpha, untick the layer box because we don't want the layers, we only want the top layer, which is H alpha, and then save that. Repeat the process for O3, and there you have your separate images. Okay, the processing steps really are quite simple. You start off by stretching both images, then you recombine these images into an RGB image and at that point you just have to play with the colors to your liking. I am not going to go in detail about how to stretch an image. You should watch a tutorial for that. There's plenty out there. I did make one as well. And um, I'll just speed up the footage of me stretching the images and once the next important step comes I'll slow down again. Okay, I'm going to save this image at this point. Um, the stars are pretty much revealed and not blown out. I didn't use a mask to protect them. That's that's all fine. Um, there is, they should be. But I don't want bigger stars in the final image, so I'm going to save a copy, call that stars, and then just lock that for later on. The next step I'm going to use is Starnet. And for that, you want the image to be just a tad brighter. And it's and it's nice to um, reveal most of the stars so Starnet can actually recognize and get rid of them. And for that, um, just take a levels adjustment and drag this slider um, to the left, the, the white point, I think it's called. This is going to blow out the stars. Um, like if I, if I zoom in, you can clearly see that these stars are now blown out blown out, but that's fine. That's what we wanted. Perhaps not that much like this. And this is essentially um, as far as we want to stretch the image. Now I'm going to duplicate it. So this is only the edge alpha. You have to change the mode to grayscale in order for standard to work. And then I'm just going to save it. as I can delete that one Starnet Mono yes replace that okay now we open up Starnet and simply run the Mono Starnet
now we can just paste in the starless version and if we zoom in now we can clearly see that there's a lot of noise but there's also a bunch of really beautiful details and you can just see how well of a job Starnet does there are basically no artifacts and it just looks so clean there's probably going to be a big ugly one down here yeah um, that is why I generally just um, leave these insanely huge stars in there like this because they can't be properly um, removed from the image without having to use your paintbrush or something so that is why I'm just going to leave that one in here and maybe this big one here as well yeah and here you can see one of the halos the filter produces the L extreme but honestly I don't I can't even see it and um, it's definitely still worth it to me right so we can merge that and I'm going to run I'm going to do some more processing on this I'm going to run topaz do another levels adjustment and then I'm going to repeat the entire same the entire process for O3. So this is more or less done. I'm gonna do one more small stretch to try and equalize them. Okay, yeah, that looks better. Right. We are going to use the H alpha as luminance, so I'm going to make a copy and call that luminance. And now we have to make an RGB image. Obviously, we only have two channels, so we need to create a synthetic third image. And for that, I'm simply going to copy both of these images. And then it really doesn't matter which one. Uh, I'm just going to reduce the opacity until it's somewhat pretty. In this case, I'm going to go heavy on the H alpha just so that um, the image is cleaner. I'm gonna go with 35%. merge these layers and now we're going to call this green because this is the synthetic image this is O3 so I'm going to call this blue and H alpha obviously is red so I'm going to call H alpha RGB and then I'm just gonna select the blue layer copy it um, turn the eye thing off again go to channels select the blue channel and paste it in if you look at that now um, at the RGB image it's not exactly pretty but um, that's why you have the third channel copy that and paste it into green and this is what we end up with uh, obviously that is not exactly um, beautiful but we're gonna take care of that so we can delete these two and if we now set this as a luminance layer you can see that it just brightens things up a bit and I've been experimenting a lot and I found that the channel mixer and the color balance tools are pretty much the most important ones to getting a nice color balance. So this is this really is trial and error. I have no specific way of doing this. It's just trying out things and looking what's and, and checking what's looking good 
um, and just playing around with the sliders until you get a satisfactory result. This is not pixel math and pixel inside or any fancy recombination algorithms. This is just playing with sliders. And I simply like the control you have over the image using this. And so by playing around with this, you can shift the the weight of the of each individual channel. And yeah, that's exactly what I'm gonna do. I'm gonna play around with this and I'm going to speed up the footage once again. Okay, so you can see I have a whole bunch of adjustment layers and if I just put them in a group and switch it on and off, you can see the, the difference this makes. And I think it's quite big. Um, yeah, now there's a couple more things to do. First of all, I'm going to create a luminance group. Put this in here and put the stars in here and I forgot to protect solder, sader, whatever you call it here while processing so it's blown out and I'm just gonna fix that feather it That's better. Okay. Um, and then I'm also going to crop the image a bit because I don't like the, the sides, they're very noisy. Yep, like this. And um, that is basically most of the processing done. Now there's a few more tricks that I want to show you. First of all, when zooming into this image, you can see there's so many ugly um, small dots and artifacts from stacking, stars, stretching, you know, everything. It's all in there and it's not pretty. And there is one very easy fix for that. Um, and that is to blur the RGB image. So first I'm going to merge all of the adjustment layers to it. And then I'll show you how it's done. Essentially you just go to filter, blur, Gaussian blur. And I found a radius of roughly 8 pixels to work really well. And as you can see now, it's clean, right? Compare this to the before and after here. It's so much cleaner. And you can take, the more pixels you take, the less color you'll have in the image. Um, but yeah, I found around eight to nine pixels to be my sweet spot. And now you have pretty much clean um, color data. There's only a few more things to do now. First of all, we can go into the luminosity section and do some more processing here. When zooming in, you can see the H alpha detail is actually not too bad, so I'm going to run a high pass filter on this. For that, you go to filter, other, high pass. And this is going to select the the edges that are going to be sharpened. And you can actually go quite aggressive with this. Three pixels. Then you set the blend mode to soft light. And then you have drastically increased sharpness and contrast. 
so that's nice. And I think I also want the image to be a tad brighter. So, yes, that's better. Just a little more contrast. Yep. That's nice. And this is a classic case of, hey, you didn't use a mask. So I'm going to have to mask these areas. For that, I'm going to delete this layer mask. Color range. Select the highlights. And paste them. Invert this and feather. Yep. Okay, finally, I want to get a bit more saturation in there. And then I think I might just blur it a little more. good and now the only thing that's left to do is to get the stars for that I use Troy's Astro Actions they're free um, you can download them online and there is this neat um, function or action called separate stars and sky I'm going to run that then we can delete these layers and now we have stars in the image fancy wasn't it um, these stars are all white, and I like that. I like it that way. If you want color stars, you can either go back outside and record some RGB stars, or you could alternatively um, leave in the stars when processing the image, but they would most likely have weird colors. And that is why I prefer to do it this way. Um, and yeah, that's that's about it. This is pretty much the final image. I think a bit darker. Yeah. This looks nice. I mean, keep in mind that this was a very quick process. Usually I spend hours and hours and do fine mask adjustments, a little more contrast here, a little noise reduction here. And in general, this was pretty bad data. I'm quite sad um, that the dithering failed me that night and in general I'm going to revisit this region with a faster scope as well and get more exposure time as we all like to say. <laughs> but um, yeah that's that's pretty much it.